Today I'm going to be upgrading the CPU in this early 2006 MacBook Pro 1,1, which currently has a 32-bit Intel Core Duo CPU. I'm going to be upgrading it to the CPU I pulled from that MacBook motherboard, specifically the uh, Core 2 Duo T7200. Pulled it and gave it a reball, and it is ready to go on this board. Now I do want to point out one thing, it is possible to get a quicker CPU like the T7400 or the T7600, but given that I'm mostly doing this project for fun and not to actually get more performance in a machine as I don't use this old machine, I decided not to pay double the price to get a quicker CPU that's only a little bit quicker. One quick note, the reason why I did not use a Penryn CPU is that they are not electrically or physically compatible with the previous CPUs. Okay, I've hit a little snag. If you look at the way that the thermal paste from that CPU spread on the heatsink, you can see that with the new CPU, the dye is gonna fall off the edge of that copper area that it's supposed to make contact with. So I'm gonna have to buy the heatsink from the Core 2 Duo MacBook Pro model in order for that to work. If you notice on the Core 2 Duo MacBook Pro heatsink, the square here that the CPU makes contact with is in the shape of the die, so it's longer this way, whereas on the Core Duo one, it's longer this way. So I'm gonna buy this part and then uh, that should fit. Okay, so I got the new Fujikura pipe that I ordered, and as you can see, it has a much better shaped contact area for our Core 2 Duo CPU versus the original one there. Um, and the other thing I did do is move the uh, thermal sensor over because if we take a look at the connector on the original one that came on this one here, you can see it's one of those newer MacBook vertical connectors, whereas the older MacBook Pro that we're working on has this style connector. So I did just move over the thermal sensor by heating it a little bit to weaken the adhesive, then peeling it away and carefully gluing it back on here with high temperature glue. And then I also put a piece of um, high quality Saint Gobain kept on tape over it as the original had that too and that just prevents it from shorting against the bottom of the uh, motherboard there.
There it goes. And we get a bong. And an Apple logo. So it is functioning properly. I've got just my wireless keyboard connected for now. And there we go. It is up and running. So let's take a look about this Mac. And now we have a, come on, focus please. There we go, Intel Core 2 Duo, just a two gigahertz. And if we go ahead and head to more info, you can see that we are still running that MacBook Pro 1,1, but now with a Core 2 Duo 64-bit CPU. So that is awesome. All right, so we got the Geekbench results. So here's the original one, and here's the new one. Not much of a performance improvement, but of course we now have 64-bit capability. All right, so it's the next day, and I went ahead and installed the Mac Lion simply by using the bypass, the same one that's used on the Mac Mini 1, where you remove the platform support.plist and uh, replace the OS install package on the media, and now it works. And you can see we now have Mac OS X Lion installed, which we can do now that we have a 64-bit processor. So yes, the update to 64-bit computing here on the MacBook Pro 1.1 is successful, so that's pretty cool. Maybe at some point in the future, if I ever see a good deal on a faster uh, Merum-based Core 2 Duo, I'll upgrade that just to get a quicker chip in here. But uh, now that it works, I'm pretty happy with it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and uh, happy holidays.